All right, good evening. I'd like to call to order the planning board meeting for Thursday, April 7, 2022. I'd like everyone to stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So, introduction of board members, we have all the way to the left is Paul Amatucci, and then Jerry Graybill, then we have Vice Chair Dave Andreessen, myself Michael LaRue, Phil Roy, and uh, Alternate Amber Fecto. We also have Code Enforcement Officer Jen McCabe here, Tammy Bellman, the Town Planner, and Phil Saucier, Town Attorney on Zoom. Okay, so, um, open up the first public comment. Um, it's for anything not on the agenda for today? All right, seeing how no one stepped forward, I'm gonna close the public comment and go to old business from March 17th, 2022 agenda, 259 School Street, Solar LLC, tax map R49, lot three, Mike Sudak, Atar Engineering, and Andrew Keller, applicant. Uh, yeah, you might want to just move a little bit because that pole is right in the way. For yeah, that's better. Okay. All right. If you can't hear me, let me know. People at home. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, for the record, my name is Michael Sudak, Atar Engineering, here on behalf of NH Solar Garden and SOW Solar Incorporated. Um, and I guess... I'll turn it back to you for how you want me to conduct this, if you want. Well, um, so this is just an opening from the table from last meeting. Right. So I guess I guess the next route would just be going over the findings of facts. No. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. Okay. We haven't made a decision yet. You were in the discussion portion of your meeting. Okay. At the last one. So we had a butter questions and concerns and concerns from the board. Mike wrote a very nice paper on it, document, except it's a, not a meeting on March 31st. It was a workshop. That last page. I caught it today. So of, of, my, of my letter? Answer some of those questions. Okay. Yeah, uh, that works. Sure. Be happy to do so. So all of the board members have that document. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, so overview. So... Um, I guess I can recap a little bit. So was it the 17th was yeah. the last time we were before you guys? Um, and the application was tabled. Um, there, were, there was plenty of public comment. Um, we wanted a little bit of time for all the board members to chew on it and see if we got any response from the DOT. Um, so I can go through my document. Um, if you want me to go at length through more sections, just tell me to shut up and, and go on. Um, so first item, uh, and Tammy, you're also welcome to chime in because I know you've been involved with the DOT process. So you guys got copied on the um, application for an entrance permit that was submitted to uh, the DOT, I believe, two meetings ago. Um, yeah. Um, we haven't received comment back from Van Terrell, who's the Region 1 representative. Um, Tammy and I have both been in contact with him. I believe you you more so than I as of late. Um, and I thank was, you. I was actually lucky enough to speak with him. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go on about the conversations we've had about that. Um, you want to rehash, Tammy, or? I talked to Van Terrell up at Maine DOT um, after my continuing the application. So I believe that's been incorporated into the, the findings of fact just as a condition on whether or not that happens. But that's really all I have on that item. Um, 
the remainder of the document is just addressing a bunch of the different um, post public hearing comments and questions that were sent in from some of the abutters and as well as Jerry's notes. Um, I can go down through that line item by item if you'd like me to, or yeah, just briefly. Sure. Um, let's see here. Just reading my own document here. Sorry. Okay. Um, first item was, I believe, a question from Mr. Kavanaugh regarding um, the C channel posts and whether or not they there would be foundation issues with refusal on ledge. It's actually an earth screw technology, so it, it's meant to be affixed to all types of medium. It, it can go through rock, it can go onto ledge as well as soil. So there really is no concern there. Um, and also, Andrew Keller's with me tonight. You're welcome to jump up if you want me to. Yep. Um, Sorry, should have mentioned that at the start. Um, next item is the entity responsible for providing training um, for the emergency responders of the town, town staff. Uh, the prime contractor would be performing that. Uh, the next item, uh, a standard removal period for decommissioning. Uh, typical language would be a six month period. I, I can't remember what the specific language of that question was, but six month period for remo removal of the equipment. Um, next item on sheet two now, uh, concerning project abandonment. Um, let's see, sorry, I'm rereading re myself here. I'm just gonna read it, because I, I wrote it and it must have been good enough. Um, this specific development would be part of a large portfolio of projects owned by a fund. The fund is responsible for the decommissioning and the surety requirements will outlive a company going out of business. So hopefully the back end of that um, refreshes your memory on the comment, but I do have the comment if need be. Um, the next one I'm going to skip over because that's a credibility issue. Um, this one is the use of batteries. I believe we have it on, on the general notes, but no batteries used with this, pro with this project at all. Um, the whole, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that because I don't think I need to get any further into it. Um, the next item is on photovoltaic array specifications. Um, do I want to? Yeah. Um, okay. I'll read this one again verbatim. Uh, the proposed panels are a commodity and the applicant does not provide a specific brand at this stage of the development, partly due to availabil availability of panels in the future. The intent for this development is to use 530 to 545 uh, watt panels, not megawatt, boy. Uh, for which size and specifications of can be easily researched. All equipment is monitored remotely along with annual inspections to ensure there is no breakage. Uh, next item, again, is regarding the C channels. Um, they're driven to a depth between eight to 10 feet to get below any frost depth concerns with heaving. Um, next item regarding wind resiliency, uh, the racking is built to support upwards of 125 mile an hour winds. So. I believe well, uh, well above any of the question wins from the uh, the original comment. Let's see. The next item is regarding inverter and transformer specifications. Um, the inverters are dry. I believe the question was whether they're dry or wet. And the transformers are utility specified equipment uh, that's consistent with units that are specified for other municipal services. So nothing. Um, out of the ordinary there. Um, next question is regarding lighting. No lighting associated with the development, nothing that is overnight. Um, no PM to AM lights, just no lighting at all associated with this array. Um, the next one I'm going to touch on last because that one I'm going to ad lib on. So I'm going to skip to the last one on the second page, which is regarding the entity and development name. This one was discussed pretty at length during the public hearing. Um, we are absolutely going to be changing it up. We're very sorry for the confusion regarding 259 School Street um, and the, the confusion with noticing and um, maybe some, some of butter um, interference that that has caused. But um, we're beginning the process to change that, just drop the number, have it be School Street Solar LLC. But I just want to stress that that's a process that takes time. There's hundreds of documents with across state different state agencies that need to be revised. So um, 
it's something we're absolutely doing. It's just going to take a little bit of time. So uh, that. May I interrupt? Sure, absolutely. Um, when it comes to the renaming portion of any entity similar to this, you have already done one. So once the official name has been changed, you will get a letter requesting that the approval be moved to that name or the denial be moved to that name. So once you make a decision, you will probably see Mike one more time or Andrew one more time <coughs> in which to change the name officially so it will be on the record. Yeah, it'd be an amendment, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're okay. Um, going on to the third and final page, there's only one item here. That's regarding toxic chemicals in the panels. This one also was discussed um, at length during the public hearing and actually you wouldn't mind. Do you want to touch on this one, or I'm happy to read what you provided? Okay. Um, so this one I'm going to read verbatim as well. Um, this item was discussed at length during the during the joint workshop um, between the Planning Board and Select Board held on March 31st, 2022. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll include that part. Uh, while the meeting was closed and no outside narratives were permitted nor given, Select Board Chairman Wright and Code Enforcement Officer McKay both provided competent responses to this question. There's no factual proof supporting the notion that toxic chemicals will infiltrate groundwater from broken panels. Solar panels are not constructed of materials that could be transported into groundwater or abutting wells. Um, I'll leave it at that. So, uh, switching back to the second page uh, regarding the array siting. Um, and this is a question from Mr. Kavanaugh, um, and I'm going to try and respond to this the best I can. So, um, obviously, you guys are just seeing one finished product that's on a piece of paper, and when you get into the drafting software and take a look at it, it looks more like a between a Venn diagram and a pile of spaghetti. Um, there's a lot of offsets that are taken into consideration when citing these projects not only more of the electrical code requirements from adjacent to three-phase power outside of areas of agency concern, prime farm and prime farmland, what have you. Um, there's stream protection setbacks, wetland, wetland setbacks. There's a large wetland complex on this site. Um, try to keep it as far away from abutting resident residences as possible. Try to limit our wetland impacts as much as possible. And my interpretation of your town's ordinance is what landed me on it, and steep slopes, sorry, I wanted to add that one. My interpretation of your town's ordinance is what landed me on this location. Um, and I'm going to read a section of your ordinance that I included on this page, um, chapter 14.15.n.2, land use standards, where allowed such, stru such structures and facilities in the essential services use shall be located as to minimize any adverse impacts on surrounding uses and resources, including visual impacts. So there's a further provision within your ordinance 8.37 that allows for screening to minimize and prevent those visual impacts. And that was taken into consideration with why the array was cited here. If I impact the wetland buffer and then I put a line of arborvitae up there, that's not going to prevent me from impacting the buffer. So. I just want that to be understood with why a lot of a lot of thought and a lot of iterations went into why this is where it is. So that's all I got. Okay. I'll be happy to expand or answer any questions you guys have. Yep. On, on the uh, comment to the composition of the panels and, and what's contained therein. Um, did I hear you correctly? You guys have not decided on a on a brand or manufacturer panel, or you're, you're switching. Did I understand that correctly? Yes. So, uh, Andrew Keller from New Hampshire Solar Garden. Y yes. So again, at, at this point in time, there's not a specific. We don't specify the exact panel manufacturer. Okay. Um, they have what they call a tier one um, kind of uh, recognition of a panel. Gotcha. Which means that they're bankable, they're financeable, that um, the companies that make them are going to be here in the future. Um, and so we always spec that that level of panel, yep. but the sizing is what matters. So as it goes into the site plan, you know, a 200-watt panel is obviously going to be a lot 
smaller than a 500 watt panel, Understood. for example. So that's, we don't want to be like, we're not giving you this information, but we just want to be clear that what panels are available today or when the project were to be built, as you go into like Q4, as we know in construction, Q4 gets very busy, so it's, a, it's an availability issue. But as long as we're specking out a panel that is of this size, in that range that Mike shared with you, then that gives, make sure that this doesn't change the layout. Gotcha. So if that was your does, does the manufacturer, the current manufacturer, mm -hmm. not in, and I know you can't <laughs> speculate on what if we're going to get them in the future, but I assume they have a material safety data sheet. Yep. Could, could we get a copy of what you are currently using sure. at some point? Yep, no problem. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else? No? Okay. Me, yes, Tammy? Would you, please, would you please ask the audience that no secondary conversations go on because I can't hear everybody? Okay, so please stay quiet. <laughs> Thank you. I, I understand sneezing, coughing. Yeah. I just, I can't hear the okay. other conversations. Okay. So now it's up to the board to do their discussion and make their recommendations. Okay. I don't have anything to say. Okay. Okay. I would like to just add on the conditions, if, if it is appropriate, that we would like a copy of an MSDS for the currently available and sourced uh, solar panels, and if that changes, an updated MSDS. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you have to make a motion. I would like a motion to add verbiage to the conditions of approval that the project provide a material safety data sheet or similar document to outline how uh, the solar panels are to be handled and what risk they pose to human and or environment. I will second that. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Sorry, what was the vote? I was writing. It was five. 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 All right. So should we discuss the waivers now? Yeah. Okay. So there's two waivers. One is a high intensity soil survey that is required for the site plan review application as this development. All right. Sorry, I'll read it again. High intensity soil survey that is required with the site plan review application as the development proposes no water or sewer services, a medium density soil survey was utilized from the stormwater analysis. So they're asking for that first waiver. I'll move that we grant that waiver. Do you have a second? Do you have a second? No, no, no do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? <coughs> okay. And I'm voting no. Okay. Well, uh, all against? Opposed? Three? Okay. So, that one is not. Okay. Second waiver is site plan drawing scale being one inch to 60 feet. The size and dimensions of the subject parcel were too great to facilitate the maximum of one inch and four equals 40 inches. Wait. Is that a typo? No, because normally the dimensions on your designs are one to forty. Right, inches. I, I'm sorry. It's it's on the scale. Is yeah, sorry. Yeah, but on the first one it says one inch to sixty feet. Yep, should be one inch to forty. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'll say I'll. Uh, sorry, paint fire. I move that we accept that waiver. I, I will second that one. Okay. Further discussion? Yes. Yep. Why is why are you asking for that waiver? Because of the dimensions of the site. If if it wasn't such a, a hot dog site, I'd be happy to comply with one, an inch equals forty. But it's sixty seven acres, and it's kind of a long and thin parcel. Okay. So I just can't fit the whole thing on a D size sheet. Okay. Okay. 
Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, that one passed. Okay, so we have the waivers. Um, should we do the findings of fact first or the conditions of approval first? Um, I do the, the findings, well, you have to do the conditions because you have to approve the project before you can do the findings. Okay. All right, so I'll go over all the conditions of approval. Um, first one is before certificate of occup occupancy is granted, a stamp decommissioning plan and proof of a surety bond in the amount recommended by the plan taking out, taken out on behalf of the town of Berwick and shall be submitted to the community development and planning office. And two, if the solar farm stops producing power for one year, the property owner shall have one year to implement the decommissioning plan. The bond shall be called by the town and the bond shall be released to the town for re remediation and three, prior to the start of construction, the town shall receive all required permits and sign-offs from the Maine Department of Environmental Protection and Maine Natural Areas Program, the Stormwater Management Law Permit and RPA PBR for activities adjacent to significant vernal pool, statement of no concern regarding spreading se sedge, <coughs> and four, the applicant shall keep the surety bond active and current the cost estimate for the decommissioning plan shall be updated every five years to reflect cost changes and due to the fact that the MDO, main DOT has not made a final decision on the exact location of the access road to the solar array, should Heritage Drive be required for access, then the condition of Heritage Drive shall be documented before construction of the solar farm. Any documented damage to Heritage Drive shall be remedied within 30 days. And number six, the name of the project will be changed to School Street Solar LLC or a similar name if there is a conflict with the Secretary of State to remove any confusion with the actual residents at 259 School Street. And number seven, all direct views from ground level shall be screened off mm -hmm. by offset double row landscaping hemlock suggested with a green mesh fence within six months of the issuance of the certificate of occupancy. And then number eight would be what yeah. Phil just added for the MSDS sheets. Yep. Number seven on the views for the landscaping. There was some rewording done with it after the attorney had looked at it and I thought I got you the right copy and not the used and have it. Okay. So if you want to see that, I can provide you that. If you want to hold off on number seven and approve it at a later date, you can do that also. Do you have the verbiage available? I mean, is this um, something that we can... Hold on. I just might. <laughs> Mr. Chair, yep. well, am I am I allowed to voice while you're in the middle of reading? Mm. I actually don't. It's not a motion well, on the table, so I guess not. Not yet, because we're just discussing the conditions of approval. Okay, I, I just wanted to add, um, with the denial of the high intensity soil survey waiver, is that something you want to add as a condition of approval as well? Well, if that's not a waiver, it's required, isn't it? Right, but we obviously don't have that at this okay, time. Okay, so yes, we would have to add that to the right. conditions of approval. Sorry. Yeah. You're right. Thank you. Welcome. So we're going to have nine. Nine yeah. conditions of approval. <clears throat> So nine is the high intensity soil survey. Yep, is needed. No, I guess I don't have it with me. I thought for sure I ran it off to you and I apologize. Tammy, is that something that Phil could speak to? Phil, you had the 
the tree verbiage on the last copy I sent back to you. Do you have that right Yeah, there? I just pulled it up, and it sounded to me like they're reading the, the version you sent to me, Tammy. Let me, let me read it. The last version you sent to me was, all direct views from ground level shall be screened by offset double row landscaping, hemlock suggested, with a green mesh fence within six months of the issuance of the certificate of occupancy. Yeah, I thought that was a different one. That's the version you sent me at, um... This afternoon? Yeah, I can tell you what time. 2.16 today. Okay. You might be talking about the back and forth you and I had, Tammy, on the findings of fact. Um, no, no. Regarding the findings of fact for the standard, it's going to be the standard for all the students. I see. Okay. And I believe that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Okay, here it is. Item B. Yep. All direct views will be screened by two offset rows of evergreen plantings, dwarf, spruce, hemlock, thula, or approved equal. With the use of a green privacy mesh, the screening shall comply with Section 8.37 of the Land Use Ordinance. I just didn't take this statement to put onto the screening side. Okay. On that's number the, seven. That's the updated. So version. that is the yeah. number seven. This is the updated one that you've got. Okay. I, seven. Without giving them more of an option of trees, because depending on when they go to put it into the ground, is going to affect whether or not they're successful and whether or not the screen is going to take. Right. So. This should be number seven. Okay. Can we read that back again? All of them? No, can we, uh, can just we read that seven, seven, seven again? again? Okay. So make sure that we have that right. Okay. So number seven, condition number seven is all direct views will be screened by two offset rows of evergreen plantings, dwarf spruce, hemlock, thula, or approved equal, with the use of a green privacy mesh, the screening shall comply with section 8.37 of the land use ordinance. And the reason I made the suggestion for the green privacy mesh is because chain link fencing can come with a green covering on it, hence you're not seeing the bell. It's not, the sun hits it wrong, it's not glaring off the sun. As you know, all fencing that is the metal has the chance of picking up the sun reflection. The green mesh does not, and hence, should the leaves fall on the trees, it's going to make it harder to see the screening from the abutters. Okay. I'll make a motion that we accept the conditions of approval. I will second the motion on the conditions of approval. All right. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay, so we got four, four, one. Uh, Phil, uh, not Phil, Paul, sorry. Thank you. All right. So now moving on to the finding. No, we have the completeness of the um, application, right? No, whether or not you're going to approve the application. Okay, approval, sorry, approval of application. Yeah, my bad. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, the plan. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Okay, I'll second it. Okay, further discussion. Further discussion. Yes, I have something. Okay, Mr. Dave? Chair. Uh, you know this plan really opens up my eyes. I know this is our fourth um, solar farm that we have going in in this town, but this, this really opens up my eyes. Maybe it's been because it's been a few years. I'm not a big fan of this project, but everything that we have in our books and everything that we have approved, the land use ordinance tells me I have to vote for it. I have to. So you'll find me supporting it, but I'm not a big fan of that, and I think that this board needs to take a time out, and we need to, I don't want to use the, the moratorium, but we really need to um, dig a little bit deeper into these ordinances 
when it comes to these types of projects because this one we didn't have enough we have we have enough people here tonight and I assume you're all here for this project right pretty much no okay all right um, we had a, we had a few quite a few I think 20 people the first time that this this first came to the board um, and this is I mean I think that all the other projects the last three had a handful of people just the butters um, but that's just the way that I see it so I'm going to be pushing for um, digging a little bit deeper and doing a moratorium on things for at least six months until we can dig a little bit deeper on these things because if we have another project come come to the board I don't want to sit here and be saying the same exact thing and I know that it's gonna we're not gonna be able to get anything in June maybe November possibly um, but as of right now you have my support that's it okay anyone else I, I'd like to expound a little bit on what Dave said and I, I agree with you um, I think we need to do our due diligence with regard to coming up with uh, better verbiage for our land use ordinance and I think we need to make that a priority yep. um, this project meets the current criteria um, of our town land use ordinance and uh, for that reason we, we have to approve this um, but I think we need to do our homework and be a little better versed and put ourselves to task to write a land use ordinance with input from the town and uh, something that is palatable for for the people of Berwick yeah with input okay. from the town and when we tell you with input from the town you, you have our email address and you know you, you know when we have our meetings twice a month uh, on Thursdays you can come to the planning board and you can you can discuss these things and we look forward to the discussion on these things but this is something that I mean uh, I'm, I'm gonna be kind of hot to trot on this for lack of better terms okay thank you anyone else okay all in favor okay four one Paul with the no Mike, I'll take the changes, get it signed by Mike the first part of next week, and I'll let you know when they're available for the box, because I'm sure you're going to want an original signature. Sounds good. And would you be able to provide for the next planning board meeting a signature block on that plan so they can sign it, and it can be recorded with your findings of that? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, everyone. All right, best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so now findings of facts. Okay. Um, do you want us to go? Does, does anyone want us to go over these, or are we we all read up on these? I've read them. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the findings of facts. I'll second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Okay, 4 1 with Paul again with the no. Okay. okay. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, next old business from March 17, 2022 agenda is preliminary subdivision plan. The preserve at Rolling Meadows tax map R45 lot 39 Providential Equity Development LLC. All right. Um, good evening. My name is Liam from Matsar Engineering. What's I'm your Jim calling in. Yeah, just for the record. Sure. Yeah. I'm joined here by Pat Carroll um, from Providential Equity Development, and uh, I'm here seeking application completeness and preliminary plan completeness uh, for the preserve at Rolling Meadows at 127 Pine Hill Road. Um, it's a 26 single family lot subdivision served by public water and sewer. Um, outside of our um, planning board process um, to give a little bit of an update. We've been in discussion with MDEP, IFNW, MNAP, and MHPC in preparing our proper permitting 
um, recently, and we plan to submit our site location and development permit, permit by rule, and NERPA Tier 1 permit uh, in the next two weeks. Um, we have a public information meeting just before that two weeks that we're going to submit it. Um, all of the abutters have been notified for that. And um, yeah, with that, um, I'll give the floor back to you. Yeah. Yep, Tammy. On my original planner memo that was sent out for the last meeting, I was also, Liam was on vacation, so I was in contact with Mike on it. And I knew Liam would have the answers to my questions that I posed on this. He did provide the information. There is an update regarding rolling meadows, the preserve at rolling meadows. And that's the planner memo. Most of the concerns has been addressed. And they are in the process. Okay. The only one that I, I really hope the board will consider is the high intensity traffic study. Okay. As opposed to just the medium. I know they're just under the window between the high and the medium, but that road has so many accidents on it on a regular basis that mm -hmm. it would really be to your discretion if they can improve that. Can I, can I speak on that? Yeah. Um, okay, so um, the, high, the uh, traffic study, um, that in the ordinance, I, I printed out the sheet right here, um, it says for subdivisions involving 40 more parking spaces are projected to generate more than 400 vehicle trips per day, traffic impact analysis is required. Um, if you do the IT calculation, a uh, 26-lot subdivision generates about 260 uh, vehicle trips per day, um, which is 140 less than 400 that are required. And um, I think mm -hmm. um, what you were referring to is uh, the Collector Street design, which we had already designed it to the Collector Street standards. Correct. But when you first came before this board as sketch plan, mm -hmm. you came in twice for sketch plan, SMPDC recommended the higher level be, and they're the specialists on the roads. Yeah. They have a traffic study person, Dean Williams can probably take and address this also. He's a traffic person. And it's still recommended that the high, higher level traffic study person <coughs> for that. For the traffic impact analysis. On your map, where where is it uh, intersect with that that road? Pine Hill Road, mm -hmm. right here. Okay, and that's going to be the main uh, getting on the property and getting off the property point. Yeah, that'll the be the main point. entrance, secondary entrance on Knox Lane right there. Is there any easement or or available property that would allow you to put a turn lane in there, or or not so much? Um, I mean that. There would be room for a turn lane. Gonna well, they're going to come out and tell you to speak it in the mic. You need to speak the mic. No, no, just take it over here. Sure. Remove it. Sorry, Mike. No, thank you. I, I just you? think a path to yes for you is going to be if, if you guys are willing to uh, go that route and put in a turn <coughs> lane. Um, it, it's going to, regardless of what the, the outcome of the traffic study is, that that's going to make your road to yes, I think, a lot easier. I think the issue we're running into is with the intensity of development and adding more and more, you know, businesses and residential uh, is creating traffic incidences at a higher rate. Um, and I, I'm just throwing that out there as an idea. I don't know what you guys are amenable to. You're saying uh, left turn lane on Pine Hill Road onto the Rolling Meadows. I think that's going to help you out. That, you know, you're not going to have people trying to merge on the traffic that's moving along. At what what's the rate of speed out there? 40, 40 ish, forty five. Um, I don't even know if that would even be possible from possible. from Pine Hill. It's thirty five. Right. No, I'm saying to add a, a left lane on Pine Hill. I don't even think that it's that would be wide wide there. enough. Yeah, right. I think it'd be unlikely. Right. Okay. I, I think without that, you definitely have got to lock into the. 
terms of the traffic study based, based on the recommendation. Okay. So do we want to make a motion for that? Do we want to make a motion to require uh, the more stringent traffic study in the interest of public safety? The high impact traffic analysis. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Okay, four, yes, I'm a no. Okay. Now is just what, for completeness? Yeah. Okay. I, I will make a motion to find the application complete. I'll with second that, that caveat. Okay, uh, further discussion? All in favor? Okay. It's 5 0. Thank you. So, wait, wait. Okay. So, if they are complete, what do you need to schedule? The site walk <laughs> and a public okay. hearing. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. I had to do that. Okay. So, um, is there a site walk for the next? When's the next public hearing we can have for this? Well, let me ask the applicant. Do you want to spend eight hundred dollars on a newspaper ad, or would you like to spend possibly a little over a hundred? <laughs> That's one heck of a question. Well, the reason I ask is because if you don't mind spending the significant larger amount, we can go through Foster's Daily Democrat, which is now owned by USA Today. Their rates for publication are significantly higher. Higher. If we can go with the Weekly Sentinel. Depending on, I try to keep it as few words as look, I can, but I do have to put certain information into the ad. So that one might run you on $104, $105 versus $800. Which is ridiculous because how many people really read the newspaper these days? Right. But the Weekly Sentinel is going down in the office because we get them here in the office now. And people are stopping in and picking them up now because they found a close location where they can get the information. Well, good. Thanks for telling me. Now I'll know where to pick up my coffee. So what, what is the advantage to running it in the uh, more expensive newspaper? You get it on the schedule. You get it on the yes. schedule Quick. sooner. Soon. Right. So if you wanted to be, what, next meeting? Um, no. I don't think it I would have to be the one after I, that. If I go with USA Today or Fosters, I can potentially get you on for the next agenda. Otherwise, it would be the first one in May. It's May 5th. Yeah. May 5th. I'm willing to so, spend $800. You want to do what? I'm willing to spend $800. Okay. So the site walk for the 21st, and there's 5 o'clock worth? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So you want the public hearing that day also? Correct. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, what would you like to have flagged for the site walk? The road. Um, Just the road center line? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Right. Yep. Uh, well, we want to have, yeah, we want to have all the roads marked. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. We actually, for the initial site walk, we already have grade stakes in. For the yeah. Okay. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Is it already cleared out of trees? And Nothing yet. Nothing yet? No. Okay, so what are we walking through? Trees? We're walking through mostly field. Yeah, it's oh, mostly field. field. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 There's a section there's a section that is uh, one of the cul de sacs is wooded, but yeah. Yeah, the last okay. part, right? Yeah. There it's yeah. One, two, three. As well four as the spot. second entrance on Knox Lane. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So moving on, we have a public hearing, site plan review, conditional use application, House of Hope Recreational Center, 25 Sawmill Hill, tax map U1, lot 14, Dan Ciazzo, is that, hopefully I spelled that right? Ciazzo. Ciazzo, okay. Uh, EI Civil Consultants.
No. <laughs> yeah. I put in my mileage on it. So my name is Daniel Cayazzo. I work. Oh, sorry. I did. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It was seven thirteen. Good. Yeah, it was before everyone started leaving. <laughs> okay. So, my name is Daniel Cayazzo. I work for Civil Consultants, and we're representing the House of Hope. Um, and I'm joined by Mike Hennessy of said House of Hope. Um, and we're presenting the proposed recreational youth center at 25 Sawmill Hill. Um, so, the existing site is in the village overlay. It's got it has the House of Hope, which is a non profit soup kitchen, food pantry. Um, there's two existing parking lots, there's a large lot down at the southern portion and then a larger lot in the north. So what we are proposing is a 20,800 square foot recreational youth center that will have a basketball court, soccer field, classrooms, office space, um, and it'll, it'll be a great addition to the community in our opinion. Um, it'll be mainly open Monday through Friday after school. Um, the two existing entrances to the southern parking lot will be converted into a one-way access, uh, which has been sized for bus drop-off and, um, you know, most of the actual parking will be contained in the northern parking lot. Um, we have two ADA spaces closer to the building. Um, and for the, the, for the stormwater, there's an existing... Um, drainage easement from the abutting lot that currently runs through the location of the proposed building so we've been in touch with the abutters and they've already agreed to this and and so we're rerouting you know the the drainage around the building um, and there's an existing 24 inch uh, HDP uh, pipe that runs under Sawmill Hill so we're gonna tie into that um, I think that kind of sums up the project so bring it back to you guys okay well, this is just open to the public now so if anyone has any questions um, they won't be answering him until uh, old business and then they'll provide an answer can we see you come on up to the podium yeah you gotta just you gotta if you're gonna say something you gotta come up to the podium state your name State your name and address. Tom Blanchard, 96 Old Pine Hill Road. I just wanted to see the, the plans. Couldn't see it in the audience. Oh, great. Does, will this, uh, who, who, ha, who bears ownership of, of this community center? We'll, we'll, take, we'll take that down. We'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, okay. In, in the next section. All right. Well, I'll hold the rest of my comments. Okay. If you got any more questions, yeah, if you have any more questions come yep. on up. Yep. Get the questions out. We're writing them down, and okay. we'll have the applicant sure. answer them. Anyone else? Tammy. Hi, uh, Mr. Chair. You should, Mr. Chair. Yep. You should let the people in the audience know that once I leave the podium and you close the public hearing, they can't ask anymore or make it. Okay. Mistake. Yep. So after the public hearing, when it's closed, the that is the only section for a public comment. So when we move to old business, it's there's no more public comment. So if you have any questions or concerns, now is the time to say it. Yeah, and you guys can take. You guys can just step back. So. Yeah. Because okay. <laughs> they're not answering any questions <laughs> until old business. Mike's That's a, just Mike's a scary dude. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, scared of speaking. Yes. <laughs> You want to come on up, yeah. Yep, just come on up state and state your name and address. Yeah, Alan Kravitz, 4 Halfling Lane. Um, I don't have a question on this project. No, well, then you can wait. This is just All right, for but this will project. Will we be able to speak afterwards? You have another public comment, we correct? Do. That's all I wanted to know. Okay. Okay. Thank you. okay. Yeah, we have another public hearing right after this one. Okay. No. Is it public? Oh yeah, there's no public comment section after this. Whatever, it's, yeah. this is no, just for. Yeah. Yeah. 
Just oh, okay. As long as it doesn't have anything to involve anything else on the agenda, you can say something in the public comment. But if it's something on the agenda, you cannot speak about it in a public comment. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify, there is another public hearing for um, a different applicant after this, if that's what you're looking for. Yeah, it's in there. Okay. 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 All right. Mr. Chair, yes. I also have an answer um, of something that came up at the site walk when you're prepared to receive that answer. Okay. Oh. Okay, no one else. I will close the public hearing. Thank you. Um, next is public hearing, preliminary and final approval, subdivision, second amendment to Richard Damaris, approved subdivision by Les Bodwell, AKA Navina Acres, LLC, tax map R44, lot 21-5, J. Stevens, PE Civil Consultants. Hi, I'm Les Bodwell. Good evening. I'm Jay Stevens with Civil Consultants. I'm obviously helping represent Les with his project on the end of Hafflinger Lane. Uh, what we're doing essentially is back in 2008. You may need to grab the mic. I don't oh, know. Yeah, if sorry. Can hear you. Sorry. Back in 2008, a project was approved called the Desmaris Subdivision. And it was a road that came in at Halflinger Lane, and it was came down and into a little cul-de-sac, and there were like 19 lots. For whatever reason, in 2014, they revised the project and took away the lots that were back here and just ended right here. So the road came in, had a little cul-de-sac, and went out. Basically what we've been doing with this project is trying to put back in the lots that were out here that were originally approved. Hence um, a big open space and then the lots that replaced the lots that had been removed. Um, these lots are in the same locations, they're the same geometry, the roadway is in the same location, has the same geometry as what was originally approved. And what we've been doing is going through the process to try and get this project approved, but it's really a reapproval of what had been done way back all those years ago. Uh, we have a full set of plans, obviously. We've been to a couple of meetings with the board, um, and obviously we're here tonight to answer any further questions and keep the process moving. I don't think there's anything more to, as far as the presentation goes. No, it's the DEP, we're still pending. The uh, Army Corps of Engineers has completely approved the project, and we actually provided the town a copy of the Army Corps permit, uh, which actually addressed a number of comments that the board had asked previously. Uh, related to culvert sizing and location and design. Uh, the Army Corps has approved all of that. Um, we are just waiting for the DEP, which has some stormwater questions, which basically involves the treatment buffers. That's what they're out there, you know, still, still working on. It's been rough. They changed project uh, reviewers, project managers, uh, three times, I think, since we were doing this back last year, and they st still are trying to iron out that end of it, uh, and we're just waiting to hear the final word. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anyone from the public have anything to say? Now we do. Back up. Now is the time. Yep. Just state your name and address. Yeah, Alan Kravitz for Halfling Lane. Um, so I'm one of the direct butters to this. Well, I'm, I'm in the old section. And um, the couple of questions I had was that we 
we presently have um, a covenant on the first group of, of uh, the development. Now, my question is, will that covenant extend into the back, into the back area? And if it does, um, will they be bound by the same? I mean, I don't know the legal um, binding of a covenant anyways, but it is recorded with the Registry of Deeds, which is where I got the copy from. Um, and in addition to this, it says upon 75% completion in occupancy permit um, that the town would accept the this as a as a town road. Is this still part of the agreement? Because it's in our covenant, um, and it's also in my deed, which are both recorded documents. We are on town water and town sewer, so I'm the new sections, I assume. Um, why it would remain a private way is beyond me. So these are these are the primary questions that I have. Um, we've gone. My wife and I have actually gone through the whole uh, new section, and it's quite impressive. I, we had trouble getting up there, but we managed. And uh, I mean, it looks pretty clean and and clear, pretty well marked. Uh, but these are the, the other items were the questions that I had was, you know, where it says in the covenants and it says on my deed, and I believe it says on your deed too, um, that the town, upon 75% occupancy permit, um, that the town would accept this as a, as a uh, town road. So is this still going to happen, or are we going to have to plow that road ourselves for the rest of our lives and pay all the taxes on that road? Okay. Thank you. All right. Hi, right, thanks. Can I ask a quick question? Uh, just want to know, uh, can you supply us with a copy of that government? Yeah, i got it right here. Okay. So I can give you a copy of my deed, like too. Or uh, the planning board would like to go through it. Okay. Do you want it after the meeting? Uh, yeah, yeah, just hand it to Tammy and she'll take care yeah, of it. Okay. As long as I get it. Can she copy it here? Up to her. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I have to hang out to the end of the meeting, though. <laughs> <laughs> you can pick it up on Monday. I'll do that. Okay. Hello, my name is Kim Jakes, and my husband Michael and I live at 3 Halflinger Lane, which is the end of the current development. The right-of-way for the subdivision expansion currently runs through our side in our front yards. My hope is, uh, or I anticipate, um, over the coming months that Les will work with us to maintain the integrity of our property and to be as conservative as possible when building the roadway. I do have a couple asks um, during the construction phase. Um, First of all, I would like ample notice when the widening of the driveway will begin so we can relocate um, our gardens. I also ask that we're provided with advance notice of any utility interruptions. Um, I work from home three days a week and I have a college student who has remote classes. I would also ask that, they, that Les keeps the extended roadway watered during the summer months to minimize the dust so it won't all come in our, our front windows and doors. Uh, to piggyback on what Alan said, um, I was also going to, to speak to turning the cul-de-sac, the first part of the cul-de-sac, over to the town. There is money in escrow to put the final top coat on, which was to put to be the last condition, was my understanding. Um, I also had a, a question about the covenants that we have um, and if they're going to be identical to the ones in, um, in the new section. Um, specifically, we in our covenant, we have a 1,500 square foot minimum um, requirement for the houses that doesn't include um, decks or porches. 
Um, I noticed that a number of the houses, they look great, it's going to be beautiful, but a number of the houses are less than 1500 So I'm just wondering which covenants will be crossed over. Um, are they going to be the same as ours? Um, also, uh, is there any sort of timeline um, for road completion? Um, the road goes right through our, our front yard, so, um, you know, if it's, if we could have an approximate time frame of when they're going to start digging it up, um, and when they run the utilities, how long it will be before it's paved and we can get the entrance to our, our driveway back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next. Again, Tom Blanchard, 96 Old Pinell Road. Uh, my property's right here. Right here. My, my question is, uh, like, was explained this project has changed a lot uh, from 2007, 8, then 2014, and then I, I'm not sure what happened to the Norma Court project, and it went from that larger project to the smaller project. We're back to this. I'm really confused where we are on this project. Uh, but my last question about this project, which uh, I knew Richard Demarius, and I thought it was a great project, and that's why I bought the first house. I was a seed project that led to this to begin with uh, Richard Demarius and uh, um, Hadley Moore uh, from Sherry Properties that tag team to start this development way back then. My question is, are any of these new projects have any easements with them to allow for a future road connection to Norman Court? I'd like to know that. Okay. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you. No one else. I'm going to close the public hearing. 7:32. That one's 7:32. <laughs> okay. So moving along, we are going to be going to approval of minutes for March 17, 2022 meeting. Make a motion that we approve March 17, 2022 meeting minutes. I'll second that. Okay. Further discussion. All in favor? Okay. Okay, now to old business, site plan review, conditional use application, House of Hope Recreational Center, 25 Sawmill Hill Road, tax map U1, lot 14, Dan Caezo, right? Uh, I civil consultants. Sorry. Caezo. Caezo, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Nobody gets it right. <laughs> All right, so for that, I guess the only question was the ownership. Yep. So um, House of Hope is a 501c3 nonprofit. So that's House of Hope is its own entity. If that. Okay. That's yeah, your question. So there's no, there's no additional entity uh, that's going to own this other than uh, the House of Hope? Co correct. The, the Hope, so the Hope Center actually owns the, the real estate, which is 501c3 nonprofit. House of Hope leases the property for a dollar a year. Um, forever as long as it stays a nonprofit and is an outreach and that was more as a checks and balances so that someday when we're all dead and gone that it's still serving the community and doesn't become something to, to make money off of. Okay. So yep. Thank you. Sure. <clears throat> so Tammy, I think I have a question for you. On the recommendations, the first one is request a HydroCAD stormwater runoff plan be provided due to the size of the structure in the small MS4 permit. As one side of the building does not have catch basins and CB2 rim height is above the ground around it. Um, the civil consultant's response is that the CB2 rim elevation has been adjusted. So are you still recommending that? Um, in speaking with Christy, and also SNPDC, 
they had still recommended the hydro caps. Okay. Okay. And Christy is Christy Raposa, who Dan has already reached out to, and she said the movement of the MS4 permit around the one side, going from under the front where the, the slab will be, moving it over to the side. That part she said was good, but the hydro cap stormwater runoff plan was from SMPC. Okay. So they've got most of their approvals on it. I believe SMPDC was just really concerned about the runoff and the angle coming down from the upper part, like you showed us at the site lot. Uh, um, okay, so what was, I guess, what's the. They had requested a hydro cap stormwater runoff. Plan. So you're still looking for the, the hydro cap? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and you may be able to come up with that. You've got some very talented engineers in your team, so they may already know how to do that. Uh, well, so. I we, I ran a HydroCAD, and, and the D1 that's attached on the, the back of the plan set, um, you know, it, it is a stormwater plan. I, I didn't give the actual HydroCAD output. If you, if you would like the HydroCAD output, I, it, I can, you know, supply that as well. Um, we had primarily prepared the stormwater um, because we were, we were simply rerouting an existing um, series of, of catch basins. Um, primarily, this stormwater was for the abutter to know that you know the changes and the additional impervious area because of the house or because of the new recreational youth center wasn't going to back up into their property. Um, and so I had sent him you know the numbers that we had come up with, and that's when you know th there was no issue on on their end um, with any of our numbers and and any sort of backing up. Um, so if, if you'd like, I can you know provide the HydroCAD numbers if you want to see them for yourselves and. Um, that's no problem. Okay. Does that suffice, Tammy? Yep. Okay. okay. I may have done number two, the statement of financial capacity. Okay. Because they had sent that in. Uh, they did provide the parking plan. And Dan also showed me at the meeting tonight exactly where the, the berm is going to be for the the bit in this okay. It's going to be to separate George Street from the parking lot because right now that one side of it is completely open mm -hmm. and you never know when you're coming down George Street or if you hit the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So this way with the children being there or the potential for the children there and even an 18 year old is a child so any age is there. They'll have definite breaking areas for the parking area and it'll be Two way in and out on both of the openings, but it also gives them a better idea of when they go to plow and the cars are trying to get in and out. It's more of an organized area for them. Yeah, and well, we've got both of them, so I'm sure you're more than welcome to. Yes. These are the letters for our fire chief and sewer department? Yes. After the site walk today, um, code enforcement has asked the uh, Board of Fire Department, uh, Chief Plant, to review the section of the building next to the House of Hope um, to see if he wants to put in access road there for life safety. Okay. Um, he wasn't sure. He wanted to just look at the application tomorrow when he gets into office. And then he'll just write us a quick memo on his findings of that, if they can keep it a courtyard or if they're going to have to put an access there. Okay. And that's, sure. and that's just the 26 feet in between both buildings. That's what you're talking about. That strip. 27. 27. Okay. Point three. Okay. 27.3. <laughs> Sorry. And, and at the sidewalk, we discussed it was 26. <laughs> so it's okay. You know, there is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is space for, you know, a fire or emergency vehicle to come in through the back. This is all paved uh, to the back of this existing building here. So, so there is space. Um, so, I mean, what, whatever he ends up, you know, wanting, but. Yeah, the space is fine there. Um, I just want him to take a quick peek at the side of the building before mm -hmm. you guys start construction. Um, so I've asked him to do that and it sounds like he may be over there tomorrow doing it. So, okay. okay. Um, 
yes for completedness, right? Is that um, correct, Tammy? Well, the one question I have, um, item number six, the open space. Yes. Between the open space dimensions and the node on L1 did not agree. Um, which which node on L1? Uh, note 10. So as long as they agree, if the board approves this, when it comes in for final, it's going to be one of the key areas on the because it, if they're not in agreement, and that's for the, um, the open space is at 23.8%, which is beneath the required 25%. One um, has it up, one has it down. So I think so, we're, I think we're mm -hmm. over, but I think it's they're right. separate pieces. Yeah, so yeah. just to comment on that. Um, so note 10, I, I'll just read it out loud. So um, section 6.4.2.5 of the Berwick Land Use Ordinance requires 25% of the site to be designated as open space. The proposed site development uh, provides 45,290 square feet of vegetation, or 41.3% of the total site, meeting the open space requirement. And so that 23 um, point, I forget what exactly it was, um, initially was we had shown on the plan set from this point on the property line to this point, just a kind of a straight line through, this vegetation itself was that 23.9. Um, but in our initial discussions with the code office and, and planning, we were told that that 25% is cumulative throughout the lot. Um, so even though you know just this area is that 23.9, you know there's we're considerably over the 25 percent for the total lot area um yeah so just get either change it to the full 41 or say cumulative 41 percent so i i don't think any reference to the 23 or for the, the 23 percent has been removed from the plan um okay. unless <laughs> yeah so no, I, it has i don't think there's any conflict between note 10 and any Super. any provision it, in the event the fire chief needs a wider Access, yep. is that going to affect it, that it, number for you at all? He won't need it wider. Okay. It's just going to determine the use of that. So whether I in between that building is going to be made for an access road or if they're going to use it for a courtyard. But does that take away from the green space or is that something totally different? Uh, I, I guess it, it would depend if he required something, but there because it's the 41.3% vegetation currently there is leeway you know there's still so good yeah there's 16 percent of the, the lot available because at worst you would need what 10 feet wide by that length no you, you'd need 20 okay i have a question if it had to be an access couldn't it just be grass does it have to be so that's going to be up to uh two plans to determine um let's just talk a little bit can i if yep. you don't mind yes, please. so what happened was when we were at the sidewalk today so the house of hope building sits here that building is going to run parallel to it. And so there is a 27.3? 27 27.3 27 is the closest. The section between buildings that they were talking about making in a courtyard. Well, with commercial buildings, sometimes it has to be an access road for life safety measures in the fire department, depending on what part of the building is on fire. Is my understanding, I'm not a firefighter. Mm -hmm. That's why I want Chief Plant to take a look at it to make sure he can say, okay, well, if I can get access that way, I won't need access this way, or for him to open it back up and say, you know what, gonna need an access road there to get to that part of the building if that is what is on fire. And that's what I want him to take a look at. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you guys are agreeable to that, I assume. Yeah, yeah, and and when I said courtyard, it's not like it's going to be you know there's not going to be patio. It's it's just you know place for for people to kind of congregate, and if there would potentially be any sort of you know benches or tables and whatnot, which I assume would get in the way of a truck if need be. So obviously, those just wouldn't be there if that's required. Yeah, but you'll so. have your answer right away on that. If yeah, you can just move on from that. If it's good, it's good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? No. no. So if it's not good, then the fire chief will specify if it needs to be paved or if it can remain grass? It will not remain grass if it's not good. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that in case. But I know you said that there was the buffer anyway. I'm gonna let him I'm gonna let Chief decide and he can write okay. a letter to his findings. Um I will touch base with him again tomorrow, but I did talk to him after the site walk about it, so Okay. 
Yeah, and, and I mean, that wouldn't really, um, you know, it wouldn't prevent the, the 25% open space. It would just slightly add a little bit more impervious area to the, you know, the, the runoff, which, I mean, these pipes have been sized. We have, it's an existing 24 across, but it's an 18 and an 18, and then a 15 and a 15. So that's, they're pretty, you know, good size for, for any sort of runoff. Um, and that's obviously, you know, factoring in the abutting lot that's, running through it as well. Okay. So I'll make a motion to find the application complete with the condition that the fire chief's recommendations and requirements are adopted based on, on his input. I will second that. Okay, further discussion? I just have one thing to say. Okay. Um, I'm looking at myself, I'm thinking to myself, how long have I lived in this town? 21 years now. I've lived in this town 21 years. I'm turning 44. Um, younger than me. <laughs> What's that? Younger than me. Uh, yeah. Um, and I remember when that was when that was a church still. And it just closed down when I first moved here. And then you guys bought the place, or you bought the place. And, you know, I remember you came to the planning board number of years ago for a different type it, it just it wasn't going to work out a different type of yeah. um, it just aesthetically um, not that I had any problem with it but it didn't fit in yeah. um, but I think that this is really good for the town of Berwick because we need something for our, our kids to do in this town mm -hmm. and this is perfect uh, it's right downtown and aesthetically you've changed a lot with it so I think it's gonna work out okay. so I just wanted to throw that out there um, you know you've got my stamp of approval also thanks thanks we have a, like so we have a good board that has some good input on it and then yes. a lot of people had input so good but for a motion did you already do your we already did we're in our um, you can find, no you can still find it complete but there may be another condition you may want to add go ahead okay so all in, uh, all in favor? Okay, five zero. Can we point out that I'm a non-voting member tonight? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not <just> here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did say you were the alternate, alternate, yeah. alternate. There we go. Okay. Okay, um, the planning board might want to consider putting a condition on here for the color of the building. Okay, um, what I can say to that now is it has to it has to fit the village overlay district. Um, it can't stick out. It has to be. It, there's standards for that. It can't be bright purple. Right. Let's just say that. Right. It can't yeah. be bright purple. If, right. if all the other buildings around you are tan. It's got to be tannish. Is that not spelled out in ordinance already? Not necessarily. The village overlay? It is not spelled out. <coughs> it has to go with the neighborhood. Yeah, it doesn't say specifically the colors, but it does say that it has to. You guys to, are to that, right? We yeah. can't sit here and tell somebody you have to paint your building this color. Right. We can say that in the village it has to flow with the right. village. Right. High-vis orange is not going to fit. Like going <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you said that earlier. So, I mean, I, I can ask him for yeah. you. Honestly. Yeah. Okay. okay. So one of the colors we were thinking was like a barn red. Is that, is that like, and we'll, we can run it by you guys too. Like, once you're approved, you can do whatever you want, with the exception of you got the town coming after you. We won't come after you. Yeah, that's you got the town right coming after, after you. After me. So... <laughs> Knowing you, you're going to do the right thing. And that color, hey, sure, I guess. Me, yeah, I guess that sounds all right. I'm not telling you to do it or not. Okay. Can I just say that this conversation is coming? Uh, I just want to put this on the record, Mike, but please don't um, shoot the messenger. Um, because of these color com conversations have been had for bright, splashy colors because it's a youth center with signs and things. That's why it, our... So the logo, the logo is a little bit splashy, but the logo won't be... That's okay, but I just want to um, explain to the board why we brought it up. <coughs> I think they all know. 
Now, the, the signage issue, that will be covered by the ordinance that we've already passed regarding signage, correct? No, no. because they're already no. free, and, but I'll take care of that part. I'm okay. not worried about that part. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll actually take care of it all. Color of the building, too. Okay. I mean, yes, you will. Possible, but <laughs> if we come up with something that you guys are like, yeah, we don't really like it, we can wait. Gotcha. Pretty easy. Okay. Well, you don't. I think, you, I think your ideas are fine. You don't want to say that because you might have, you know, seven different people down there, seven different. Well, times it gives us seven there. options. Yeah, <laughs> you might. You might. So. The interest of future projects. Does it behoove us to uh, dust off our, our ordinance and, and put a a more firm requirement that is less open to interpretation, or is that too restrictive? I will say that the village overlay. Um, a, Ordinance. We, okay. when I first started here, it was an extensive, mm -hmm. extensive um, thing that happened, and I would say that it is fine the way it is. There was we spent Correct. a long time trying to adopt that. Correct. <laughs> and I, but no, yeah, enough time that I don't even want to go back to. It. Right. <laughs> I mean, you can, you're more than welcome to read through it, and right. and if I mean, you have if you any want concerns, to, you can make a motion. We can go back to it. <laughs> Trying to be a member of the good idea club. Yes. <laughs> no, when, when you're not on live TV, like if you ever want to stop into the office, I can explain to you why we have it and why, what we do with it. Yeah. And and so that you know, regarding the sign statement, <coughs> the new sign, the proposed new sign ordinance, has to be voted in in June before. So their application is before June, so it would follow the old Understood. sign standards. Right. Okay. okay. That's great. No, awesome. And just one general comment on the project. Um, uh, I, I agree with Dave. It's, uh, it's well needed in this town. And also, I like the idea that it is going to be just up the street from our new development to the edge here. So it's going to blend right in and, and become a, a stronger part of our community. Nice. And I really like that. And yeah. thank you for doing this. Sure. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people involved. It's not just me. So. <laughs> Well, you're here, so <laughs> you take the credit and you can spread the word. Okay, you can spread well, the word. Uh, but thank you, guys. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So we approved, or yep, yep. Uh, yep. There hasn't been a motion. We haven't made a yeah. We haven't made a motion to approve it. To approve it. Oh, for completing this. Sorry. Okay. So you done the completed because I got the sidewalk and the public motion to approve. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve. Uh, this project. I, I second that. Oh, okay. go ahead. You're good. <laughs> it's fine. It's still all about seconds today. It's all good. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. No, because I don't have the findings of facts or any conditions typed up for you at the next meeting, you may want to have them come back so that if there are questions on yep. any of the conditions that I'm going to put together. Okay. And the findings of facts that I will also bounce off Dan, I'll send to before the next meeting. You have the verbiage of the uh, fire chief's recommendation and then also the stormwater or drainage. I believe so. If not, I'll get it off the video. Yeah. So I, I have a quick question then. Can we, so can we move forward after this meeting as far as getting the building ordered and getting the foundation plan? Because we, we can't, we have to give them a deposit check and until we don't want to do that until we're like, we're, we know we're good to go. We don't want to tell you that, yeah. Jen? We, we don't want to tell you that yet, but go ahead. Jen? Well, if, did they just um, approve this project? project? You're welcome to apply for your building permit and get started. Yeah. Okay. Next okay. Through code office. So That's good. why they're not speaking to it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. We just we just let somebody who gets paid to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I was like, uh, where are we? No, you're yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you guys so much. All right. Thank you. But Thank you're, not a, you're not welcome to get started until the building Okay, so next in old business is preliminary and final approval <coughs> subdivision, Second Amendment to Richard DeMaris, approved subdivision by Les Bodwell, a.k.a. Navina Acres, LLC, tax map R44, Lot twenty one dash five J Stevens PE Civil Consultants. All right. I'm still J Stevens with Civil Consultants, and I'm 
still here with uh, Les Bodwell to continue the review of this project. Um, I don't know if I can give you more of a presentation, but I'm ready to answer any questions you have. I guess it would just be answering those questions that the, the public had for at the public um, for the public hearing. Okay, now I wrote down what they were, and I'm sure we have them. You wrote them down. I don't know if we should let you state what they are, and then we'll answer them, or how you want to do it. Maybe the board. We'll have the board's got them all written down. Oh, okay. Yes, Jerry, please. Okay, first one. Presently, there's a covenant in place. How will that be handled? So the the existing covenant uh, is um, enforceable by you know to them, right? So I can't impose different covenants on the existing lots. Our new covenants line up almost exactly with the old covenants. Uh, there was a question brought up about the listings that showed houses that were less than uh, 1,500 square feet. That is an error on my realtor's part, Nicole. Um, so that will be corrected because the covenant, I, I did a little quick research while I was sitting over there. The covenant for the new project does also state 1,500 square foot lots. So I don't think, my attorney says that there's nothing in the new covenants that's different than the old covenants. Uh, just might be some updated wording, and I'm happy to well, actually. You guys have the covenants, and I'm happy to provide it for you guys as well. They are in your application sitting before you. Okay. Yeah. So that I think that answers that question. Right? Yep. The next one. Uh, upon completion of 75 percent certificate of occupancy, will the town accept the road? Next question I have. And that's an excellent question. We, I guess we being me, thought that the first section that they're referring to had already been accepted by the town. And under that, you know, this wouldn't be a question at this point. Uh, we do know that the new section that we're building is a dead end that the town will not accept because you changed the rules and that you know would be a dead end road and there's no acceptance of a dead end road. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stop you right there. Um actually we have reached out our town manager um currently is reaching out to legal on this to see where we're gonna stand with accepting the road or if the road will remain private. So we'll have an answer to you as soon as our town attorney gets back to us on that. Okay. Does does that include and I'm sensitive to the fact that uh these folks who currently own homes there, their deeds say that when we reach this point, how did how did the town come to that verbiage? Was that a previous legal decision? And will that be honored moving forward? Their section of the road, I believe, is already public. It's no. not? No. Okay, so I'm not going to answer that. I'm going to let James reach out to our town manager, reach out to legal, and we'll have a better answer for you for that later. Okay. But he is going to get to the bottom of it. Okay. Yeah, that's why okay. we need a copy of the covenant in the deed to ensure that we've got the right verbiage going to the attorney to make sure okay. we've got everything squared away. What is or what did apply to them at the time is when their project went through, the town did not have a prohibition on dead end streets. Right, so that's I'm a reason. I'm sure it was put into those deeds at the time because it was perfectly right. Mm -hmm. It's only recently that the town has decided no longer to take dead end streets so we have been assuming that this end section we'd be stuck with as a private street if the whole thing could ultimately be accepted it's designed completely to the town street standards you know it's unfortunate that that little clause in fact I think what we did on one of our plans was say if the town changes their mind it could be offered to the town at a future date type of thing because Town can always change their mind and go back to accepting it. Yeah. In, in essence, that's really beyond our control. It has nothing to do with us. That's a, whether the town will take it over or not. I don't know that. Again, legal can talk talk about it, but I don't know that just because it says in your deed that the town will take it over on seventy five percent. I don't know that that obligates the town. I don't know. But again, you know that's legal. It's but it's not. I I would prefer the town to take it over. I think we all would. Um, that was one of the things about well, somebody else asked the question about you know what happened between the Norman Court project and this and part of that part of that was that you know when we cut that project off because of right-of-way issues that also cut off the uh, 
uh, town taking these roads over. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, you know, people didn't want the big project behind them. But now we're, I, I, I think we're on a private road, but hopefully the town will take it over. Okay. But that gets into another question that was made, and I, I don't want to get out of order, but it's part of the same discussion, was whether or not there would be a right-of-way to potentially tie to Norman Court. There was a deed covenant literally on the parcel that this is crossing, on this little piece right here, it says that, yes, this road could be extended, but only to service this property, not any abutty properties. That deed covenant, the attorneys have been looking at to see if, in fact, that's correct, but in order to help save uh, concerns on this project, we are agreeing that no, we literally are only talking this, we are not putting in right of ways to anybody parcels, so that could never become an issue. But that deed covenant is on this piece, which we literally have to go across to get in to our site. So that might, I don't know if that helps or not, but at this point in time, we are not proposing any possible connectors to abutting lots. Okay. Jerry? Okay. Uh, I think that question was asked because the, the original one for the 75% was because the properties are already served by town water and sewer. But like you said, legal will take care of that, right? Okay. The uh, request was for ample notice of what was going to be going on to the residents that were there, utility interruptions, and minimize the dust. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm absolutely happy to do that with you guys have my number and um, you know you or Mike you may call anytime and uh, you know I have Mike's number I, I certainly you know I don't want to disrupt anybody any more than we have to okay next one was timeline for road completion I think they want to know the uh, that, that's a variable that's unknown at this point because of uh, you know the DEP had until two weeks ago to give us uh, approvals and then they asked for an extension uh, we also have, you know, found out there's a 20-week lead time on ductile iron pipe. I, I, at this point, I cannot give a projected completion. I'm hoping uh, September, but again, you know, supply chain issues are just, you know, making everything a day-to-day, -day, a day-to-day -day guess. Yeah, I think your concern was, well, how I, long I, is it going to... Right, and I think, I think part of the concern there is... As they've mentioned, there's a top coat that hasn't been put on that road yet. And the project started in 2008. So it was sort of a, apparently an unending time frame. They don't want to see that happen with this one, that we start putting it in and we don't put the top coat down. I think Les is very desirous of being not the person responsible for taking care of the road and so forth in the future and as soon as he can get that all done he's going to turn it over to the homeowners association so it's their problem in which case it will have he can't do that until he's got the top coat on and, and things like that he can't turn it over to the new homeowners association I don't think want the top coat on until the construction is done for the correct new right and that's why it had been held off right. and I, th I think i think historically you know everybody you know several people know my projects i mean i, I don't I typically don't uh, delay projects. I typically try to move as quickly as I can, and uh, and and I, I like to think that you know I, I put a good project out. And at the end of the day, you know I'm proud of what I do, and I, you know so I, I think that you know this project the same thing. I'm I'm going to go at it as hard and fast as I can, and you know uh, uh, do the best that I can. But I, I just can't control things like you know when I can get the water main or you know uh, curbing or, or whatever other you know whatever other issues may, may arise. I mean, I, I'm hoping to have this project, you know, at least a binder coat down by September and, and you know, have, you know, the project 90% done and um, ready just for, you know, the last few houses to go in and, you know, but I'm also an optimist. Hmm. Okay. Next. That's what I have written. I don't know if I got them all right. I think I got um, 
Somebody else has something. Yeah, I guess the other one was the easements to Norman Court, yeah, you which you've already that, yeah. answered. Okay. Right. Okay. I, I think you may have answered this previously, but I just wanted to make sure. I know I know we've gone back and forth on this a couple times, and you were going off the, the 2008 approval. Has anything substantively changed with regard to lot size or home size uh, or the road size? It, since then up until now that would affect this the, the only major change is an increase in the open space okay. because of new main dep requirements that they had to abide by and the project meets that oh yes okay yeah they got rid of house lots to abide by that uh, just one we got rid of one too right. yeah. yeah okay to meet all that great but the roads are almost identical when you put them up to the light same size to same size so great a lot of times I don't sit there and take all the numbers. I go like this so I can see it superimposed one on the other. That's why we tried to give her originals. The old way of making copies, they would stretch and you couldn't do that so nicely. These spot on. Yep. Yeah, in the document said we had requested the original preliminary plan to be submitted. And one of my comments on the planning note for today was that I'm suggesting because this has already been approved once, taken off again, that they not be charged the preliminary fee. Because they, they based on your ordinance, there's quite a substantial fee to go through the preliminary. This will be the third time it's paid for. It, I, mean, it, I mean, that's entirely up to the board, but. As long as that's not going to set a precedence moving forward, no, that well, would deprive the town of, of money. Of so that's my only Correct. concern. But they've got to have the same identical situation that they've done. They've got to have an approved plan. A few years later it gets canceled and they're putting it back virtually identically. I don't compare apples and oranges. So. They gave you the documentation that we asked for, correct? Correct. She and I'd love to have somebody come in and double check it to make sure when I looked at it, I looked at it correctly. Everything was included. I've been very busy, so I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. So if somebody wants to take a quick look at it, that would be great. And Les will be in next week to sign off on all the final applications. So if you want your copy signed by Les for your records, go ahead and put your name on it and give it back to me, and I'll make sure it's signed by Les next week. Do we need to make a motion to add the conditions uh, on the notifications? and on the road maintenance, i.e. watering during construction. Is that an appropriate thing for us to do, to make a motion to add those as conditions? You can condition those. Are, are you guys, would you guys be agreeable to that? All right, so I would make a motion to add conditions for uh, appropriate notifications to be made to abutters for when construction starts. Uh, for, I forgot your name, ma'am, I'm sorry. Yeah. Kim's uh, request. And also uh, conditions for road maintenance, i.e., watering during the dry season, utilities, and and the utility utilities piece. interruptions. The utility piece kind of out of their hands, I think. Right. Just but at least notice. Notice would be good. I'll make a motion to add those three requirements as conditions. I'll second that. Okay. For the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Okay. is required on this application from us the only thing again that you don't have is the findings of that I got to really figure out how to get 28 hours in a 24-hour day <laughs> if anybody can do it you can <laughs> right. I get creative but um, you can approve it and at the next meeting have them return for the findings of that I will work with Jay to make sure I've got them make because I know he's got notes and what he hears and what I hear sometimes tweak but this way we can at least converse on it and then ultimately if we can't come to a decision I go back to the minutes actually in the video okay. so if you want to deem it approved or deny it that's your call I would make a motion to approve with the conditions as noted I'll second that okay further discussion okay all in favor 
Thank you. Thank you. I was going to make the initial approval. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you I haven't done one. Yet. <laughs> I haven't done one. Yet. Sorry. Don't fight you. Same to you. <laughs> All right, so moving on to old business, findings of fact, three industry drive, tax map, R72, lot 12-4, Mike so Sudak, Atar Engineering, Incorporated, and Peter Paul, applicant. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're not present, so we can't really talk about yeah. that. Um, I do have permission from them because it is just the findings of fact. Okay. You know, All right. There's well, there we nothing go. that's going to change on it unless I need to reword something so that mm -hmm. you like the way it's worded. I mean, you could change rainy to sunny and that type of thing. <laughs> We have that much leeway. Yeah. Yeah, the planning board, you can do that. <laughs> and you've already taken and proved everything. I just had to put it all together. So take a quick look at it, please. I'll make a motion that we prove the findings of fact. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Next, for old business, conditional use expansion plan signatures for approved plan for Route 4 Storage LLC, tax map R72, lot 9-2 and 9, P-O, Neil, part of, part of okay. So the reason you're re-signing these is because you have to re-sign all of these and you have to re-sign all of the York County Registry of Deeds does not accept a digital stamp. Hmm. So, <laughs> you need to re-sign the ones that are there. Okay. And those two copies will go back to Neil. One copy will remain with us. Okay. There are two pages for each set. So you're going to be signing yeah, I'll let you sign it. Just time. sign the second one. Second. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll just hand them down the line. Yep. We're just signing and then dating one date on the yeah, I'll date it. Do you, okay. do you remember the date your original was signed? I tried to get to that. I want to say... Was it? Last meeting. Yeah, the 317. Okay. Uh, no, it would be in the, the minutes. March it would be 3rd. the one before that. March 3rd, yeah. March 3rd, yeah, because the last yeah, meeting was in the 7th. Yeah, March 3rd. March 3rd, yeah. Oh, March 7th. 7th and 17th. No. March 3rd. It was March 3rd. I watched it today. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me on track tonight. All right. I'm not that efficient. I need to use this pen. So. <laughs> 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 Okay. <laughs> 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 
phones with a camera. <laughs> You're making the agenda move right along. You're the only woman sitting up here. Sometimes you just need a woman out here. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It's fine. I said I'm offended. <laughs> Jenny's sick of hearing from me this week. <laughs> she had to send her straight because today was. That's what I'm saying. Listen, they asked oh, me yeah. if I wanted to change the postcard. He's done the work. Like, last night, never everywhere. And I'm talking to you this week. That's how it's supposed to be. So we're not voting this summer. I'm really going to call you. Although we have my personal number, so. I, I'm not going to call you unless it's like something important, or, or I'm going to make a jerk of myself again. So, <laughs> sorry. Very fine. When I'm here, I Well, no, I was like, what, what did I do? You know, I was just like, to talk to me. Just do what you wanted, Jerry. Emails <laughs> it Okay. That's, that's so, those are all signed. Um, Moving on to new business, there is no new business. I'll open up the second public comment. Okay. Public Seeing how no one's coming up, I'll close the public comment. Informational items. Tammy's got one. Do you have anything? We look first, Tam. All righty, at your next meeting, April 21st. Is that serious? It is serious. Christy uh, Raposa, who does our MS4 permit. She needs to talk to us about a new ordinance that the town will need to accept come 2023 or 2024 is when it has to be in by. It's an LID ordinance, low impact design ordinance. We're going through the structures right now. There's going to be some major changes in town. Okay, so she wants to do a workshop with you. Well, she calls it a training because a lot of you haven't heard what they are yet. So Mike knows what they are. I believe David knows what they are. Jerry probably knows. But it's something that you all need to be made aware of because once we get the ordinance done and the state approves the basic requirements of it, which are going to be minimum, as all requirements come from the state are minimum requirements. But then it's up to the town to make it so that their town will accept it. And this so. is for new construction or? Yeah, okay. whatever it's adopted in, it'll be going forward from there. Okay. So and this will be discussed at this board meeting on the 21st. She's going to update you and train you on what they're looking at and the requirements now coming forward for the planning boards when they have, like, we have so much water in this area and the runoff into the river, you're a prime candidate. You, Kittery, I think it's South Berwick, Elliot, we're all on the same call together because we're all sitting with all of these rivers and stuff, and which ultimately end up into the ocean, and you don't need Berwick showing up out there. So we can help. We're not going to have that happen. But she will be, I'm tr hoping to get her here, but she'll probably be via Zoom because she comes down from... Uh, I think it's Kate Elizabeth. Jerry, pick her up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. And I'm going to hopefully have it recorded so she can do a separate. We can take it, and if somebody wants to look at it again, they can look at just that portion of the, the meeting because it will be via meeting at the next one. So, okay. Just so you know. For question, I use this for you, Jen. What about that uh, IEC code change? Is that something? Like, I know because I'm dealing with it right now. You know because you've been dealing with it. So, our land use here in Berwick um, has us go to town vote for any accepting of any code. So, that will be going to town vote in June. Uh, we did just hold a regional meeting here, uh, Tammy and myself. Um, for contractors and local code enforcement officers, and I have to be careful of saying the word um because I get called out on it. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened during that meeting is we had uh, Paul Demers come down, he's a state building official, and he gave a training to local contractors and code enforcement officers. And he just basically took the uh, major points of change and kind of went over them. 
And I do believe that video is going to be up on our website as soon as I can get it from the county. We're trying to get it. There is a, for, for that change, there is like a two page handout that goes with that. I don't know if he had that that shows he, what the, He gave it to us, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. So we are, uh, the town of Baroque just got in the book, so I'll be reading that cover to cover over the weekend and making notes on it. But we haven't adopted the change yet. We will be adopting the change. Right. Well, we hope, we're hoping to adopt the change from the voters. Yeah. Pending voting results. Correct. <laughs> Pending voting results. It does affect voting costs. Yeah. Hmm. It, yes, it does. Okay. Um, I have okay. Do, do you have anything else? I have one more thing, but you go first. Because I actually have something. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No? Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, you go. No. Uh, no, you. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'll bring it up again. I'm not a fan of um, having people on camp on you know here and having people on Zoom. I'm just not. A, I'm not a fan of it. And I'll just bring it up again. I think that we need to do away with Zoom. I mean, we've been using uh, teleconferencing or whatever you want to call it, the video conferencing for over two years now. Um, I'm just. I'm not a fan of it. I think that if you have business that you want to discuss here in the town. That you need to come before the town committee and i know that we have certain bylaws like you can only have a certain amount of people in here and you got to put other people you know in town hall I, I get that maybe i get that maybe i don't but i mean it's, it's two years now i just I, I think that we need to move back to just having everybody here that's just my opinion Tim? as a suggestion i believe in having the applicant and their representative whether it be the engineer whatever the representative be here in the building but when it comes to having an attorney that has to travel two hours i think that's driving, different i think that's different well right to the for the town attorney yes we'll we'll open up the door for the town attorney and tell him you know, that he doesn't have to be here right but um, for or, as a, or as a pdc if they've got something right. that's so high level that i cannot wrap my head around i think that everybody needs to be in the meeting yeah yeah the, the top Sorry, this is Dean. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Oh, okay. I was just going to say, um, I, I'm a fan of being able to uh, attend virtually, but for sure if there was some uh, major need or if there was some, uh, uh, like a lot more, you know, something more in-depth that I need to be there, I would be happy to come there, but it, it is nice to be able to just virtually attend. So I was just, I just want to throw that out there. Now, my feeling on this is that uh, I agree 100% with Dave. I, I think that you should come before the board and make your and make your plea, your statement, your uh, your presentation. Uh, and Berwick telecast these, so you can tune in if you want to tune in. Uh, the same as you do on Zoom, so you don't have to be on Zoom to watch this. You can sit at home, turn your TV on, and turn to that channel and watch it. So um, I, I think there's just a very small portion of people who get excluded by not having Zoom. And, you know, I, I, I understand the reason for Zoom in the past, but, you know, I think people should be here if at all they can possibly do it. And if they can't do it, then we postpone them to another day. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So if the board so directs, I can check with the town manager to see how to get that change for the planning board agenda items. To see how to get, be in favor of that. To get it so that everyone has to be here. Do we just want to make a motion to put that forward or do we need well, to get more information? Is, is that I mean, something the selectmen make, make the policy make or? No, you don't need a motion, but you have to direct me to find out what I would need to do to make it so that the planning board applicants have to be here in person yeah. because the board of selectmen have not done that yet. Can I, all right. I, can, I, don't I, mind, I don't mind checking, but somebody's going to ask me to do it. Can, can we, can, can I make that direction to, to you to find out? Mike, is it okay? Well, first, Amber. I just think it's tricky to do that when there is a limit on the number of people we can have in here. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that we're not going to load the agendas like we have done for the past three, yeah. four meetings now. Hold right. on, okay, we're done. 
<laughs> Amen. I so, think it's so highly contested topics, and the public doesn't have the opportunity to be here if the room is at capacity. Well, we can also, I mean, yes, I've been on the planning board for seven years now. I know. I'm an old dude. Um, but I remember having meetings up in the auditorium. And, and if, if we know that it's going to be a hotly contested where there's going to be 20, 30, 40 people showing up, we can, we can schedule the meeting for the auditorium because we're not live right now. I think that's perfect. We're not, and even if it says on air, we're really not on air. I mean, she, play, she plays this back, you know, uh, another time. Um, but we're on channel 95 right now. No, we're, we're on now. We're, we're, we're live we're right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Roger that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I guess my thought on that is um, for applicants and their um, representatives, I think that that's more than what, I think that's what we should be going for. People like Dean and Lee J and the lawyer, town attorney, I feel like their need to be here isn't really as great. Mm -hmm. um, but just the applicants and the whoever represents them should be here. Right. Would that sounds right. that sounds okay. that sounds right. I, okay. I agree with. I think they should yeah. be able to answer to us. Right. Versus, correct. Well, right. well make the case in point, the last meeting we ran into technical difficulties with an applicant, right. and and that really, I, I, I sensed that that created some frustration for him, and that created what was perceived as as some difficulty in communication. And I think being in person, you you eliminate that, yeah. and you're not you're not a slave to technology. Correct. You know, I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. So yes, if we could move that to the selectmen and have a conversation with them on that. Okay. They're probably going to say no. <laughs> I know the selectmen. They're going to say no. no we're well, we'll see what they say, and they, we'll go from there, because they're the ones that create the policy. Sometimes um, I can be very convinced. <laughs> Thank you. True. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so is there any more informational items? Yep. Okay. So in the code enforcement office last week, we had three different calls that came in for violations. They were the same call of either um, a life safety officer in a house, a landlord in a house, a homeowner calling about another homeowner, what have you. Um, one was somebody had had a birthday party at their house and left and called the code office and left a message. I'm not kidding. These are the calls we get. Um, of people removing smoke detectors inside their home, garages, buildings. You cannot do that. That is a life safety issue. We will write you a violation letter on it. Um, we have had 16 or 17 violation calls just in the last two weeks. I am required to investigate at a high level each and every call that comes in. So basically, I'm just gonna tell you to plug back in your smoke detectors and clean up your yards. That's basically my message to the town today. Um, doesn't have to be 100%, but it has to be so if your neighbors are outside enjoying, they can enjoy their yard. Um, if somebody comes over for a birthday party, I guess they want to feel safe, of course. Um, so plug back in your smoke detectors. That's really just from the code office. I know, I get it, it sounds a little much, but it's true. Natural selection will sort this out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! There's that. Sorry. <laughs> so thank you for letting me say that, Mike. Um, I know it's not really. No, it's correct, it's a good informational but, item. It hopefully the people that are watching are, may be the ones that are in need of of. Yep, and what I just want to also say that even though we investigate them all, please don't hesitate to call us if you have something. Please keep calling, even if you think it's silly. You know, we may not. So keep calling. Okay. All right. So. The adjournment. Now you have something to do, Amber. I get to do that? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. It's on to the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was pretty fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> at 8.30 at night, everyone's happy. Yeah. Okay. I'll second that motion. Okay. Um, further discussion? No? All in favor? One. Okay. <laughs> awesome.